right, welcome everybody. Uh, I'm Dave Bradbury. I'm president of the Vermont Center for Emerging Technologies here. So it's a real pleasure and treat to welcome um, Senator Welch and team and uh, leaders from our community to talk about um, prescription drug costs and its impact on healthcare. Um, you know, at VSET, we work with over 300 startups a year all around Vermont. Our companies have now paid up payroll about $40 million a year just in Vermont and about 500 million lifetime. So it, it, it's working, um, but it gets tougher and tougher to add that next incremental employee. We're so often focused on finding the body and the bed, and now we're really focused on employers um, trying to afford that. Right. And just as an example, we looked at uh, some of our rates. Uh, it's about $40,000 a year premium for a family. Wow. Okay, so that's 20 bucks an hour. Add on, you know. Yeah. For, for a 2,000 hour a year employee. So it is right now shaping the calculus on who I hire, where I hire them from. Right. Is it outsourced? Are they full-time or part-time? So right. the timeliness of this major lever and just premium expenses is really important. And thank you and welcome to VSET. Well, thank you. And I'm, I'm glad everybody's here, but let me just give a few opening remarks. Um, I am uh, really, really concerned about how tough it is for Vermonters to afford to get through the month and pay their bills. Um, and it's everything from groceries that are, you know, so much more expensive uh, than they were pre-COVID. Uh, housing is just unreal. Uh, you look at it. Uh, I went on Zillow last night just to look at Burlington. I was shocked, really, because I haven't been in the housing market. I'm lucky. Uh, but healthcare is a, another one that is brutal, and uh, it's really a tough expense for all our employers. I mean, forty thousand dollars for a family, twenty bucks an hour. You know that puts in comparison the argument that we had for years about a fifteen dollar minimum wage, and it's twenty bucks for health insurance. Um, and one of the so I think on all fronts we have to be doing everything we can to try to make it affordable uh, for Vermonters uh, and Americans. This is not just a unique situation in Vermont by any means. But on health care, uh, the most outrageous uh, es price escalation has been in prescription drugs. There's just no doubt about it. And uh, it's really outrageous because of the fact that pharma, and let's start by acknowledging that pharma does some good things. There's medications that uh, extend life and alleviate uh, suffering. And in fact, my first wife, Joan, had cancer for nine years, and we were real beneficiaries of uh, some pharmaceuticals and local drugs, by the way, who we thought were terrific. But they're killing us with the price increases. And we pay in this country, as you all know, the highest uh, for drugs of any kind than any other country. And why is that? And it's not because there's some magic here. It's because of the incredible pricing power uh, that the pharma has, in my view, is abusing. And think about this. First of all, pharma gets patents, uh, which means they have a period of exclusivity because of their intellectual property. I support that, but then they abuse them by creating these things called patent thickets, by making a slight modification of the color of the pill or the delivery device, which is not anything that affects the health but then allows them to try to extend that price ex exclusivity and keep out uh, the generic market. Uh, the second thing that they do is benefit, uh, which they don't acknowledge as much as they should, from an enormous taxpayer investment in the National Institute of Health, which provides core uh, basic research. And what it has meant is that over the years, pharma has gone from allocating their profits more to dividend buybacks or dividends and uh, shareholder buybacks and executive compensation than they do for research. And then third, and this is really what's significant, they have a market that's guaranteed and is largely created by governmental policy. First of all, you've got Medicare and Medicaid. I mean, we're all supporters of that, but it is a guaranteed buyer of the, the medications that the uh, pharma comes up with. Uh, they have employer-sponsored health care, which is a tax subsidy, so that our employers get a little bit of a, they get a tax break on that, but that means that the employers are under the pressure to pay those escalating premiums. So you have this situation in our country where they get patents and abuse them. Uh, they have a guaranteed market with taxpayer support, Medicare, Medicaid, and employer-sponsored health care. And then third, uh, they have... Uh, um, uh, 
they have the NIH taxpayer funded core research, which is expensive. Uh, is and, and then we don't negotiate. So what can we do? Uh, number one, we can negotiate prices, and uh, you know that's a pants on fire kind of uh, statement for the pharma companies. But finally, you know, I've been working on this since I went to Congress in 2007. We've got price negotiation authority uh, for uh, 10 drugs, and we're trying to increase that. Every other country has that. It's called capitalism. You know, you have a buyer and you have a seller, and they negotiate about a price. Under pre-negotiation, uh, the pharma company would dictate the price. Uh, second, we've got um, we've got to reform the patent system. I'm for intellectual property. I'm for a time period during which you get the benefit of your intellectual property. I'm absolutely against extending that uh, by gaming the system. Uh, and I have legislation, and to do that, I'm getting some bipartisan support. Um, and then third, we have to ask some basic questions. You know, this new drug, what is it called, the Zimkin? Oh, yeah, it, it, it weight loss it may be good, but you know, that could cost us over a trillion dollars as taxpayers. Is that affordable? You know, it's just not. So you have to have some rule of reason here where the public is protected, because otherwise something so profoundly important is your access to the health care uh, is compromised. And what I find so hard is that if, when I meet a family where they've got somebody who really needs a medication, they will move heaven and earth to get it. And if that means getting a second mortgage on their house, if they have one, they do it. If that means cashing out the retirement, they do it. If that means getting an extra job, they do it. Because that's what we do for the people we love. But the pharma company takes advantage of that. And the pricing, price gouging that they've been doing for years has got to, it's really got to stop. So that's where I come from on this. I think it's urgent. Uh, it's one of the elements uh, of increasing costs that is just so hard. And it's not just on our families. It's so, so hard on our employers. And in Vermont, you know, I visit a lot of businesses. Vermont businesses care about the people who work there, and they want to have health insurance for them. And it's painful if they have to start dickering about what the coverage is and the eligibility, because they really, really deeply care. But you get up to that point where you can't afford it. So that's my introduction. And Nina, I guess you're going to moderate the discussion. But thank you all for being here. My name is Ina Beckis. For those of you that don't know me, and I work for Senator Welch here in the office in Burlington, Vermont. I echo his thanks for your participation today in this discussion. And what we really want to bring to the table are the experiences that you um, can speak to as employers or as individuals that support employers in terms of these high prices for prescription drugs and how those impact your work as business owners, as employers, what kind of decisions you need to make in light of those high prices. And certainly it's uh, something that's punctuating our news feeds regularly. Just this week in Vermont, uh, there was an announcement about what the proposed rate increases are for folks who are small businesses and individuals purchasing health care. And that proposed rate increase ranges between 9 and 19 percent. That's on top of what you're already paying for in terms of premiums. So we know that health care premiums, uh, there's a range of impact in terms of prescription drug and how that factors into the premium. But at least on average in Vermont for uh, those Vermonters with, who have Blue Cross, MVP, Cigna, 20% of the premium is made up of by prescription drug prices. And that's growing year over year. And I think what we really want to talk with you about is what that's like year over year for you in your roles. So how about we start with Scott? And if you could, when you introduce yourself, say a little bit about your what you do and sure. where you work and Absolutely. how you, thank you. Thank you. Yes, I'm Scott Brooks. I'm the CFO at Twin Crest Skin Care. We're a third generation family owned contract manufacturer based in Winooski. We also have locations in Essex. Um, so thank you for having our presence here. We appreciate it. Um, this is a very important issue to us. So all of your words resonate uh, very much. Um, we've been facing significant cost increases in our plan with, with medical cost and prescription drug costs. Mm -hmm. Prescription drug costs account for 25 to 30% of our costs on an annual basis. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
and like any other employer, we want to attract the best employees and we want to pay them very well and offer uh, you know, great benefit packages. Right. So years ago, what we did was we, jo- we, uh, we went from fully insured to self-insured. Uh-huh. Okay, so we kind of cut out some of the insurance company stuff there and saved us some money. And we also uh, joined a captive, which was brought more savings to us. And uh, just in 2022, we changed our pharmacy benefit managers. So that way we could uh, experience some more savings on pharmaceuticals. And that's supposed to save us roughly 75% of, of that cost. But what we can't control is what you spoke about earlier, right. you know, the competitiveness, the patents, those are things that we can't control. So I kind of feel like we've tapped into all the resources that we have, and this next step is very important to us. Oh, thank you. How many employees do you have at Twin Correct? You guys are doing great. Yeah, we're doing very well, right. yes. Right now we have about 350 employees. Wow. <coughs> That's fantastic. So you shared that you were able to go from fully insured to self-funded and you, and you have 350 employees. For a business owner that doesn't have 350 employees and their self-funding is not an option, and purchasing in the exchange might be the only option. Um, what does that look like and what choices do you have to make? And maybe Al, you could speak to that. Sure, so I'm Al Gobe and I own Gobe Hospitality. I've also been involved with health policy for quite a while. Um, so we have a couple of restaurants. Well, no, at the hospital, so everybody yeah. knows. So he had a ma- major position at the hospital and had to deal with the cost pressures there and as an employer. Yeah. That's important. Thank you, Peter. So. You know, we're a small company. When I think about my, my company, you know, 100 people, mainly seasonal part-time, but we offer health benefits. And we don't have to by law, we offer it because we want to offer it to attract the talent that we need and also because we care about our employees. So every year we look at the rates going up and say, you know, is this still a good thing for the employees because we've moved to more high deductible plans. And what was a high deductible plan 10 years ago is now, I mean, the, the high deductible is is kind of a misnomer. It's it's kind of like you need insurance for your insurance. Mm-hmm. Um, right. And so, you know, we every year get to the point where we're like, can we keep doing this? And we always say yes. But um, this is really this is really tough. Um, you know, I just want to add one thing in the prescription drug uh, kind of point. You know, when you look at you know pharmaceutical companies, you know, eight out of ten spend more money on advertising right. than yeah. they do on research. Right. So this idea that research is driving this whole expense bubble, right. I don't buy it. Right. So it's really, you know, we've got systems and structures and laws that have got us to where we are today. And if they're not serving us well, we've got to, we've got to rethink them. And I know that's what you're trying to do. Right. And I think if, if, if with all the other inflation we're seeing and we can't live with as small businesses, if now is not the time to think through some of these things, I don't know when it is. So I, I applaud what you're trying to do. Thank you. Wow. Go ahead. Gwen, you, you work with some very small micro mm-hmm. businesses and uh, other businesses that are starting startup <clears throat> businesses. Can you talk a little bit about those, what business owners that you're working with experience, not just as small groups, but even as individuals trying to afford healthcare coverage? Absolutely. Thanks for having me today. Nice to see you. I'm Gwen uh, Piccolo Hart. I'm with the Center for Women and Enterprise. We're home to Vermont's Women's Business Center, mm-hmm. um, which is a public-private partnership with the SBA. Right. And so um, we serve about 600 women entrepreneurs per year. Most of them have 10 or fewer employees, and they are the businesses that we love having in Vermont. They're the ones that um, keep our main streets alive and friendly and awesome. Um, and Uh, The single biggest reason that we see um, women not taking the next growth step in their business, be that hiring that first employee, going full time, um, or uh, usually there's there's an uh, inflection point at a a certain number of employees um, and what those employees do. Um, that uh, women don't take because of healthcare. That is the right. single biggest reason that our, econ- well, in my humble opinion, our economy is stymied. 
No, it's not. Okay. But mm, in this situation, yes, um, it's really stymieing um, our local economy. Right. And, um, and what that looks like is um, we have uh, women who do not offer health insurance to their employees, 10 or fewer employees. It's not cost efficient, mm-hmm. let alone what the employees are doing. Usually your first couple of employees are production level or entry right. level. Right. Um, and uh, so we know we have a retention issue around um, uh, um, employees. Many women are kept in um, very difficult situations um, in their families because they rely on their spouse right. yeah. for, um, for those benefits. So again, not taking that extra step. And um, what we also hear a lot of is, in, in um, specifically with prescription drugs, that they'll have a, an insurance policy on the, the exchange. I love what you said about you need insurance for your insurance. Most of our clients, if they carry their own insurance, they have the insurance for the insurance. <laughs> no, they don't, but they, they need the insurance right. policy for the insurance policy. And when they do get sick, not only do we not have a good leave system and things like that, but that's you know ancillary to what our conversation is today. But so often the prescription drugs aren't covered that they need to get well, aren't covered by the baseline plan right. that they're on. Um, and we see people um, closing their business, having intensive sure. medical debt, um, which feels ridiculous as someone who works in the you know, you know right. in the space and sees a lot of people. It seems like a, yeah. a ridiculous barrier um, mm-hmm. to economic growth. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Mike, can you share about your work over time with numerous different businesses and trying to transition from one to another and what that looks like in terms of launching a new project and how the costs of health care insurance impacts? So your company is what, Mike? So uh, I'm a founder of Apraxis right. currently. Yeah. Um, and we uh, call ourselves a medication therapy management company. Right. So we live and breathe these issues every single right. day. Right. Um, the tagline is, you know, after the prescription pharmacy-based care. So we're dealing with all stuff pharmaceutical after it's been prescribed. Um, I've been a... a tech employer in Vermont for over 20 years and um, but with multiple companies mm-hmm. uh, and multiple startups. Um, some have failed, some have done well. <laughs> um, but when I first started off, um, I, I philosophically believed that uh, healthcare is a human right. Mm-hmm. So I was like, I'm going to provide healthcare benefits right. for every single one of my employers, right. you know, total, totally covered. Wow. Um, and when, you know, in the early aughts, right, I could do that. The deductibles were in the three, five to $5,000 range. Mm-hmm. So like, I'll cover that, right? In addition to the premiums. Right. Over time, the, the deductible got sort of out of control, as Al said. Yeah, Al said, yeah. Been able to cover the premiums, although that's gotten crazier and crazier. But I basically have had to sort of cap that, okay, I'll go up to the deductible after five. And so there's this window by which the, you know, the donut, which has grown significantly for the, 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 the people that I, that I try to hire. And being in the tech space, right, it it's, it's, tends to be young people. So um, they tend to be a little bit healthier, um, mm-hmm. but, the, the, you know, but it, it's also when people are starting families, right? right. It's great to be able to sort of support people starting their families in the beginning. And now um, they're, they're, they're at risk, right? If they're gonna yeah. have a kid, it's an, one of the most expensive right. things for a young person. So um, yeah. it's been frustrating to, 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 for, to experience that over the 20 years. You know, that, that is so frustrating because you, know, you start out, and I think you speak for most employers in Vermont, yep. you wanna take care of your folks. And yep. what's more important than the security that comes with knowing you got health care coverage? Exactly. And then it becomes impossible because it's so expensive. You have absolutely no control over it. Yep. None. There, there's the, yeah. um, a guy who's on our board, great guy, I love him, very, very smart. Um, he works for Alliant. He, he, used to, he comes from Vermont, worked at Porter, was a professor at, at Albany Pharmacy. He now is in the benefits management space yeah. down in Georgia. And he said last year, 
across the board. It's one of the biggest benefit managers in yeah. the company. In the country, um, big and small plans experienced medication increase of thirty percent. Oh, one year. Amazing. And you know, Scott, I'm just thinking about you. You know, you you have a bigger company, so you have the capacity to take some steps that you took to help deal with the cost, but now you're still staring at these constant increases in the premiums. And there's no more runway for you to take steps that uh, is going to abate on this. I mean, the pricing power is there, continues to be there uh, for pharma. Yeah. Anyway, go ahead. But, so, so uh, Mike, what's it been like transitioning from one business to another? How does that, how do these costs impact your ability to be nimble? <laughs> Um, it just means that the, the, I, I understand that the um, cost of starting up a business yeah. is that much more mm -hmm. expensive. Well, you can't take, I mean, I can't imagine if I was starting a business and then it was going to be $20,000, I'm yeah. maybe making a commitment to five employees, that's $100,000. I mean, that, that's not an option. You know what I mean? It's just you're priced out of it. But it's not, not an option, meaning yeah. you can't get talent if you, yeah. you know, so, you know, it's, it, so stuck. it's a tough yeah. position. Or do you use more part-time, yes. fractional, yeah, right. out-of-state, maybe you're in there a different location that might have, yeah. I mean, that's... So we have, a fractional, we have a fractional CFO, we have a fractional compliance officer, yeah. 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 I think that's the scary structural thing, is, is the, the, the calculus has changed between last year's big increase, cost of living for you know COVID, post-COVID right. years, and then now with the proposed um, small business plans going forward, it's like, whoa, <laughs> I, I need to make the numbers work for everybody. We want to protect the benefits that are afforded the current team and employees. So as you look incrementally forward, you're, you're gonna be, I'm fearful of less full-time, yeah. more part-time on benefit, okay? And there's a, yeah. uh, there's a, a component of the workforce that that embraces that and wants that that fractional or independent lifestyle too, but it also prejudices, I think, a lot more young people that are in the workforce for the first time or magically turn 26 or 27 when they have to get off their parents' right. coverage. And right. again, that's happening in real time. It's yeah. it's sucking yeah. up more of the available pie, so you're taking professional development dollars yeah. to pay your health care. Right, as an employer, so well, and it puts pressure, downward pressure on wages, right? Because if you're, you know, mm -hmm. the full package is what you have to look at. Mm -hmm. So if you were going to have to pay twenty thousand dollars for a family policy, that's going to put a lot of uh, constraints on your ability to uh, provide that employee a raise, right? I wish it was twenty thousand for a family policy. Well, yeah, yeah, close to forty for some of them. Okay. So, yeah. but also, I think that. For small businesses and, and large businesses, we're seeing so many cost pressures right. to include labor costs, meaning wages. Right. So the option of reducing wage increases to pay for something else like healthcare or anything else isn't there right now. So property taxes are going up, healthcare is going up, wages are going up, and small businesses are right in the in the the, yeah. the vortex of trying to figure out yeah. how to how to make yeah. a bottom line with all that. Wow. Seth, you represent, you know, your round table um, represents a lot of <clears throat> bigger businesses. What's going on there? I mean, a lot of them have gone the direction that Scott was talking about. You know, if they have the economies of scale, they're going to they're gonna try and self-insure. They're going to find different ways around it, but yeah. the pressure still exists. I mean, I think Al made a great point. Um, it's really the total environment of affordability that we're talking about it's the housing pressure and that's not independent of the healthcare costs right i mean mm -hmm. our our property taxes are going up because our education spending is going up in part that's driven by healthcare costs mm -hmm. um, it is a tremendous pressure on the ability to hire the ability to expand thinking about thinking about you know if you're a small business looking at the next steps it just it, it's the it's a monster in the room um, and it, it just cannot be avoided. And yes, you may not be legally mandated, but talk to anyone who's looking for a job right now, and if healthcare is not included, you can't. It's it's a non-starter. Right. Um, and that's you know David David's point at the beginning is a good one. It's forty thousand dollars for a family. I mean, we're we're we represent large employers 
all across the state, but we are also a small employer as the business right. roundtable. Mm -hmm. I see it every day when I look at when I look at our budget. I mean, mm -hmm. this is this is a real cost. I have a young family. Yeah. I, I'm driving it. Right. <laughs> yeah. We're joined um, by a couple of folks from VSET. Do you have any observations that you want to share also on the topic? You're please welcome to jump in. Yeah, I mean, like Seth, I also have a young family, and um, you know, I actually am trying to start my own business and um, changing my role at VSET a little bit um, and shifting to part time, which means my healthcare goes away, and that's absolutely terrifying and i think there's many people that don't have the support or my spouse's insurance to go on to yeah. to be able to yeah. take that risk um and you know visa has been incredibly supportive of that and um but i think there's many people in my shoes that would start a business like to gwen's point or like you know have have a side hustle that they want to take full time but it just doesn't make any sense, especially if you have young children or you want to have kids. Um, it's just way too much of a financial risk, and like upfront, that is um, just insurmountable. Like you can't, you can't do it. Mm -hmm. um, so I, you know, that scares me because we're also talking about population decline. People aren't having kids anymore. It's like, well, why do you think that yeah. is, right? <laughs> yeah. um, so I think you know that's what scares me is that it, it's inhibiting mm -hmm. so much growth um population um people starting businesses people scaling their businesses we see it every single day at visa um and just feeling it personally now too is just a whole different level um it's it's really the way you look at your life and your family's life and the stability you have is entirely different yeah do you want to add anything yeah i'm nicole i just Thank joined VSET full time um, in November, and I graduated from UVM last May. So I still am under my parents' health insurance. Although By the way, that that was one of the best things mm -hmm. that we put in yeah, the Affordable absolutely. Care Act. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Eddie Marky and I. Yeah. 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 yeah, brilliant. Yeah, it was so helpful. Yeah, uh, one thing because I because you'd be struggling. Oh yeah. You got health insurance now, and you're well, getting started. Visa yeah. was kind enough yeah. to offer it to me, but I mean, I was just gonna say, like a lot of my friends, one, they don't live here anymore because they couldn't find a job, but they also couldn't find a full-time job in Vermont. Everything they wanted was part-time. Um, a lot of the positions were part-time, even though the work was definitely, could have been more than part-time. So I just want to attest to that point that you guys made of companies are trying to work through it, but my friends could not land a full-time job for their life. And I yeah. was, and we have, you know, UVM and so many yeah. companies being like, stay in Vermont students, but there's just not opportunity for us to do that. Yeah. Or, or, or like we talked about the health costs are so high that they're offering salaries that are 30 K. Right. right? Yeah. And it's like, even for a 23 year old, that's not a livable wage. You can't pay your bills. Yeah. You know, what's, what's really horrifying for me is that this is this is not necessary mm -hmm. you know a lot of times these things happen and you think well that's the way it is nothing we can do well it, it, the, the deck is totally stacked against everyday people in businesses and when in terms you know I, I'll just go through those things that farm has been able to accept we're the only country okay we're the only country where our government basically does not provide protection for the consumer when it comes to uh, prescription drug cost. All other countries understand that if you're sick and you need a medication, you've got to be able to get access to it. And there's got to, it's got to be affordable. And the argument that this will kill innovation, um, as you said, Al, uh, is it, it, it's, it's sort of a lobbyist driven, but not data driven uh, argument. So what we should be doing here is what other governments are doing. Number one, uh, we should be, we're the bulk purchasers. So you get a lower price per unit, right? I mean, if you go to CVS, I'm gonna go buy some aspirin later, I'm gonna get a big bottle <laughs> and look at that unit price, right? We can't do that. We have to pay the price they demand. And uh, you know we cracked that. That's what's so significant about our legislation last year. But it's ten drugs, and that's yeah. going to expand. But the principle of negotiation, where a buyer gets to negotiate with the seller, let's do that. 
And then second, the patent system has been totally, totally, totally abused. And that is completely outrageous because we're turning market principles upside down. The market is based on competition, not protection. So you've got governmental protection that are sustaining these high prices. Uh, and then, uh, you know, third, uh, as I mentioned, all of that taxpayer research goes into uh, the foundation of so many of these drugs that then get uh, marketed um, and, and, and manufactured. Uh, there's a real uh, financial contribution as an investor that all of us as taxpayers have made. And uh, shouldn't we get some, <laughs> some credit for that? So, you know, there's a lot of us working on this. Uh, we, may, we have made some progress, but it's not enough. And this is the tip of the spear on the healthcare. And healthcare is so essential. All these other things that are price pressures, they're real. It's creating a lot of anxiety for working class people. You know, and I think I gave you my little story, but I think about how it was for me, I could be, uh, I could take a chance. It'd be like you starting a small business because I just didn't have this overhang of uh, unaffordable health insurance or uh, unaffordable housing. or And so I took a low salary, right? But I had low cost. At the end of the month, I paid my bills. My checkbook was balanced. And you know what I find with people is that they don't mind us, uh, you know, having a modest start. They just want, and they don't mind working hard. They like to work hard. Yeah. But that, it has to mean that they're a half a step ahead to tomorrow than they were today. And they're not, you know, just falling behind, no matter how hard they work. So, you know, this healthcare is, uh, it's amazing to me listening to you. You know, the success you've had at TwinCraft, and now you have to deal with this, and all your folks, and Al, I mean, you didn't even get into the price pressures this puts on our hospitals, where they have no control, big as they are, with the big budget they have. But that's a real price pressure, and that's a real constraint for our hospitals too, right? It, it absolutely is. And I, I, I would also say that after all the years of being in, in the state and healthcare, it puts an incredible emotional pressure on our providers. Yeah. It's almost like we blame them and we don't know why right. because things are expensive. And, you know, when you think about 8,000 nurses that work within, you know, five miles of here, you know, it, right. it's just not right. We shouldn't right. blame like providers should be proud that right. they are the most incredible providers of healthcare in the world. And you know this is, you know, we don't understand why these prices go up when we're, you know, just running a restaurant. But but I well, think you've got it. No, those are, those are things that are within our control to change, and it's inexcusable that we're not changing them. Uh, so you know I'm going to continue to be as determined as I can. We have a hearing in the Judiciary Committee uh, on legislation I have about the patent thickets. Uh, and there's a lot of opposition to it, and it's all monetary. You know, they've got a sweetheart deal, and they want to keep it. It's as simple as that. Uh, but we've got to speak for everyday people and everyday businesses. So I'm, we're looking forward to that. And then Senator Durbin's given uh, us the opportunity to have a full-scale hearing on this. Well, I'm, I'm hoping you have a moment in time. Like on the board over here, the oh, yeah, two, this. Yeah. two diabetes drugs that are being used for weight loss that we've been reading about. and. I mean, it's shocking that it's 90% less in Germany, an advanced aging population sort of country. Like, it's shocking. Right. You know, not that I want to go to war with Denmark, but, you know, the Danes should be able to help us out here, I hope. But um, the other thing I'm but hopeful of Germany is Germany has protections. Yeah. That's the difference. The, the other thing. In, in the, the manufacturing, that's literally, right? Yeah. And the they, other thing I hope, record profits. I'm hopeful that. Um, your colleagues and those in Congress um, will feel more comfortable trying to make a change here because these two drugs are blockbusters. There's unprecedented demand. States are removing them from programs, North Carolina and right. others. So you, you actually have voters that can't get what they want on a particular drug that's not a narrow, right. very narrow, disease-specific <coughs> chronic condition thing. So. Um, the masses can't get what they want, and even when they can get it, they can't afford it. It's changing the composition and the calculus around full-time employment with benefits or not. And again, the numbers are shocking enough that yeah, I'm I hopeful. We, we should use that in our hearing, I think. Don't you? We, we got it. Do we? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, I want to thank you. I don't want to keep you too long. I really appreciate you coming. 
um, because the the thing I worry about is that that anxiety that everybody has uh, is legitimate, but we've got to have a response that's effective. And you know, I think about uh, the nurses, and yeah, during COVID, it was so so hard, and all of us were staying home. They had to go wade into the most infection-ridden place in the world. But then when a everyday citizen has to go to the hospital, they're scared because they're terrified about what the medical debt will be. So they're, the person who's really, really ang anxious doesn't always act appropriately. They get angry at the person who's in front of them, and that's the right. nurse. Mm -hmm. And that's, I guess, what you're talking about. That's right. Mm -hmm. So that's really tough. And then our employers who are trying to make decisions you know, it's a touching story about you getting started and before you even knew whether you'd be successful or not, you made a commitment you were going to take care of your employees because health care is a right. So you did that, and then it's grinding. grinding and I'm not grinding. unusual. Pardon me? Most employers, I think, feel that way. I, that's they really want to do right by their That's, that's my experience. You know, we're kind of small here in Vermont, and it's a family type of deal for most people, even the bigger, even the bigger firms. But if, you know, the 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 load is getting hot, heavier and heavier and heavier at a certain point the back breaks and uh, but you know the good news here we can do things about it but we've got to get the support and uh, I mean I, I, do you think there's bipartisan support for the anti patent wicket I can see that being it's really tricky. really tough yeah. I think th there is some bipartisan support again when we're having this conversation here this conversation could be going on in the reddest district in the country because the people that my colleagues represent all are having the same situation that you're talking about on behalf of your employees, okay? So that's where there's some support. And you know, I get frustrated sometimes at the political system where we don't just, uh, uh, just you know, put the verbiage on hold and say, wait a minute, how are folks doing? How are your employers doing where you live? who you represent with the cost of health care. Because then you're having a conversation about, all right, what do we do about it? I have one suggestion that I think, I think that will be completely nonpartisan in terms of both sides can get on it, which is yeah. that take cost consideration uh, under review at the approval process. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. And I think everyone would get on board with that. Patents, yeah. I can see, you know, Become no, a little it, bit trickier, but well, in, in, if, but what happens is, you know, when these pharma companies set the price, they basically right. do an incredible amount of studies to see how much they can get away with, um, and effectiveness has to be a part of it. I mean, you just you can't have something that costs more than anybody can reasonably afford, and whether it's healthcare or housing. I mean, these are these are real structural problems, and uh, it doesn't have to be this way, but that's why. We've got to change some things in the laws uh, that protect everyday folks and everyday businesses. If we can do it, they're there. The solutions are, you know, they're there. And that's what I'm going to push for. But it's very meaningful to me to hear from you because it's so real, you know, and uh, we want to keep that connectivity in Vermont where people have a sense of confidence that if they take a risk they and they do it right and they work hard, uh, they got a shot, you know. That's what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much. Really. No, I really appreciate it.